Prime Minister's three-day, three-nation tour has intense schedule with substantial and comprehensive agenda, including wide-ranging interaction with the political leadership of these countries, Indian diaspora, and the top industrialists and CEOs. Let me first begin with Germany, which is the uh, first destination. As you all know, Germany also holds the presidency of G7. On May 2nd, tomorrow, uh, Prime Minister will co-host with German Chancellor Excellency Olaf Scholz the sixth edition of India-Germany Intergovernmental Consultations, IGC, in Berlin. This will be Prime Minister's first meeting with Chancellor Scholz after he assumed office last December. You would recall that Prime Minister's first telephone call with the foreign leader in 2022 was with Chancellor Scholz. The meeting between the two leaders would provide an excellent platform not only to strengthen the existing multifaceted bilateral partnership, but would also shape and develop an ambitious agenda of cooperation for the months and years ahead between India and Germany, including in the field of development partnership, green agenda, trade investment linkages, and the overall strategic partnership. Uh, let me briefly uh, touch upon the intergovernmental consultation mechanism whose uh, sixth meeting uh, would be held tomorrow. This uh, is a unique mechanism which brings together several ministers and officials from both sides to engage in bilateral discussions, culminating in a plenary session which is chaired by the two leaders uh, to review take stock and assess the cooperation between the two countries across a range of area, as also to identify fresh areas of partnership. In the plenary session of the IGC, uh, the focus on cooperation is along three strands principally. First, foreign affairs and security. Two, economic, financial policy, scientific and social exchange. And three, climate, environment, sustainable development, and energy. During the IGC, the Prime Minister would be assisted by senior ministers from Government of India, including Finance Minister, External Affairs Minister, and Minister of State for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences. I must mention here that these ministers would also have a, a separate and substantive program of their own besides assisting the Honorable Prime Minister in the deliberations of the IGC. IGC would then be followed by a high-level roundtable where Prime Minister Modi and Chancellor Scholz would interact with the top CEOs of both the countries. Prime Minister will subsequently interact and address the Indian diaspora in Germany. As you know, uh, last couple of years of COVID has been a constraint on international travel. So this would be an exciting opportunity uh, uh, for Prime Minister to interact with the Indian diaspora. In the evening, Chancellor Scholz will host a private dinner for Prime Minister. On May 3, after concluding the German leg, Prime Minister will travel to Copenhagen on an official visit at the invitation of Prime Minister of Denmark, Ms. Mette Fredriksen. This will be Prime Minister's first visit to Denmark, but his third summit-level interaction with the Danish Prime Minister, and the discussions would focus on bilateral issues, as well as issues of regional and global interest. Uh, Prime Ministers of India and Denmark would later also interact with the business leaders of both countries under the auspices of India-Denmark Business Forum. Uh, just prior to that point, which I should have mentioned, uh, Prime Minister would also uh, pay a call on uh, Her Majesty Queen Margaret II of Denmark, who would also host an official dinner for the Prime Minister. Like in Germany, in Denmark too, the Prime Minister will interact with the members of the Indian diaspora during a community event. The, the substance of the partnership with Denmark has many significant uh, pillars, I should say. 
Uh, that includes uh, a green strategic partnership, which is a model of cooperation that focuses on renewable energy, sustainability, and green growth. There is also a joint action plan for five years, uh, essentially focusing on the specifics of this partnership. And besides the ongoing cooperation in the field of wind energy, water management, circular economy, shipping, and the smart cities. The visit will be an opportunity for us to also uh, shape new elements of partnership in the field of skill development, shipping, agri-technology, and mobility. On May 4th, Prime Minister will participate in the second India Nordic Summit with the Prime Ministers of Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Sweden, and Norway. But prior to the start of the summit, Prime Minister will also hold bilateral summit meetings with the leaders of Norway, Sweden, Iceland, and Finland. Broadly speaking, uh, uh, while the specifics of discussions and the outcomes uh, with regard to the Nordic countries and in the summit would emerge later as we, as we continue with the visit, broadly speaking, India's partnership with Nordic countries is structured around four to five clusters. And uh, these clusters, if I were to list them, would include one, green partnership, two, the entire space of digital and innovation economy, three, economy, trade, and investment linkages, four, sustainable development, and five, the uh, partnership relating to the Arctic region. The Nordic Summit will provide an opportunity to take forward the agenda in these clusters forward. Uh, I must mention here that India is the only country apart from the United States with whom the Nordic countries have summit level meetings, uh, which I just mentioned. Uh, on his way back from Copenhagen on May 4, Prime Minister will make a brief stopover in Paris, France. Uh, France, as you know, is an important partner of India and Europe and also holds currently the EU presidency. Uh, as you also know, that President Macron has just won a second term, and the India-France friendship and strategic partnership has seen a great momentum thanks to the leadership of Prime Minister Modi and President Macron as also their close friendship. Uh, Prime Minister's visit to France will provide an opportunity for us to carry forward the high-level engagement between the two countries post the French presidential elections. As you know, both countries uh, have continuously nurtured and delivered on the ambition of their strategic partnership, particularly in the areas like clean energy, environment, people-to-people -people ties, space, digital, manufacturing in high-end sectors, etc. In Paris, Prime Minister and President Macron will hold uh, extensive talks across uh, various formats. Prime Minister would depart France on the same night on the 4th of May. Insofar as India's position on Ukraine is concerned, it has been amplified, made clear, enunciated in great detail in multiple fora. And I'll just, just uh, uh, single out a few key elements of it. One, you know, we've always maintained that there should be cessation of hostilities in, in Ukraine. And two, the path to the resolution goes through diplomacy and dialogue. And I think uh, these three strands pretty much uh, capture what we have to uh, say in Ukraine. And pratham ye ke yatra ke mutmuktesh jo hai, wo ek samarik, sakaratmak, arthik, green agenda pe adharit ek, uh, ek, uh, ek sustainable agenda nirmit karna. Lekin jahan tak Ukraine ka prashan hai, us mein mukhya ta uh, uh, hostilities ka ant, tatha diplomacy dialogue ke madhyam dwara uh, samasya ka samadhan, wohi Ukraine ka ek, uh, jo hai, uh, hamara position hai, jo ki uh, kaafi samay se bar bar sarkar jo hai, आप सबके सामने एक ना किसी फोरम पे रख रही है